Welcome to Grocer Pod. My name is Sean Kasednar. I'm excited to be joined in studio by the new AWG Brands Executive Director, Emily Detweiler. We have lots to talk with Emily about, but before I get to her, I want to remind you to please subscribe to Grocer Pod. Subscribing means new episodes will be downloaded for you each week. You can find Grocer Pod on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform you use. So, as I was saying, Emily is the new AWG Brands Executive Director. Prior to this role, Emily was the executive director of category management and execution here at AWG. Emily led the category initiative strategy and execution, space management, and shelf merchandising programs, as well as further development of the AWG Partner Gateway. Thanks for joining me today, Emily. Thanks for having me, Sean. Yeah, so how did your prior experiences prepare you for your new role at AWG Brands? Very good question. So I'll start even with my prior experiences here at AWG, but I also have a lot of experience in my past that's more private brand specific. So I joined AWG almost a year ago now and was really brought in to help develop processes around our category execution, delivering against the convergent strategy. Um, And so as part of that process, I really got to know the needs of the category management team and really understanding all of the assortment optimization work that they're doing to ultimately drive profitable shelves for our members. But also, you know, AWG Brands is a huge component of that. So making sure that we have the right products and likewise that they're in the right brands because we have a multi-tier brand portfolio with an AWG brand. So that was a really big part of it. And then likewise, taking it the next step to make sure that the AWG brands are included in the right space within the shelf sets. So I would say a lot of the experience that I had in that first part of my time here with AWG absolutely has set me up for success in the AWG brands role specifically. I certainly have a better understanding of the brands we have, some of our key assortment. I've gotten to know a lot of our different members um, throughout that process and likewise really develop strong relationships with each division because each division has some specific needs within the shelf sets. So that was a really good good way, I guess, of quickly learning the organization and, and some of the different needs of both members, you know, the category management teams, and then likewise, you know, how we take that and bring it to life for AWG brands. So you said you had some prior experience with private with private labels in general. Uh, talk to me about that. Yeah, absolutely. So I've got about 20 years of food industry experience, and seven of those years, I actually worked for Damon Worldwide. So Damon is one of the world's largest uh, agencies, essentially, that's dedicated to developing private brands with retailers and wholesalers. And we do actually work with Damon here at AWG. So I spent time with them across a variety of retailers throughout the U.S. I started um, with them specifically at Hy-Vee. So I essentially was the private brands marketing person for Hy-Vee and helped them develop some different uh, sub-brands, some different marketing strategies, cause-related things, and then obviously building the normal business. Um, And I had the chance to then work on a couple of other retailers throughout the Midwest and then moved to Connecticut, actually. And I led brand strategy for Damon for their domestic U.S. businesses. So I have had a chance to work on small and very large um, retailers all across the U.S. Uh, My largest was Ahold, so working on the giant business in uh, the East Coast, and then also Winn-Dixie Bilo down in uh, Florida. I've worked on Meyer. I've had some Spartan Nash experience, uh, Rayleigh's out on the West Coast. So a lot of great opportunities that I think really helped prepare me to understand the private brand side of the business. Um, especially from a strategic perspective and how, you know, we can work together to help grow that opportunity for our members. That's awesome. Um, recently, I had Shelly Moore on and we were talking about AWG's convergence process progress. Um, AWG brands, especially uh, the brands repositioning, assortment, and sourcing have been a big part of Convergence. Mm -hmm. How will AWG brands fit into Convergence going forward? Absolutely. Well, AWG brands is one of the three 
strategic pillars within Convergence. So, you know, we'll be right there in front and center of everything that is happening. So part of it, as I was alluding to earlier, is really working very closely with the category management team from the assortment piece, right? Making sure that we have the right products and the right brands. And then likewise, we have a sourcing team that is dedicated both within the AWG Brands team and also additional assistance from our Damon team to really go out and understand what are the supplier opportunities. So sometimes that might even mean seeing the insights that are happening in a given category and trying to find new suppliers. It might mean going to our existing supplier base and asking them uh, if or encouraging them to try to help us, you know, create a new item that comes out in our strategic process as something that we need to offer, uh, but maybe we don't have today. And so that's a big part of it in terms of really understanding what we can do and and perhaps where there are white space opportunities that we're not in today. Um, And likewise, we are utilizing Convergence as a key platform from an AWG brand standpoint to do RFPs or requests for proposals. So that really helps us. One of the key elements within that is to try to help decrease cost of goods for private brands so that we can provide the best opportunity for our members. And then that's definitely a big part of this too. So our sourcing team is working on that, you know, on a consistent basis and we track it. So, you know, with Shelly, one of the big things that we're working on from an IT standpoint is how do we track all of this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And so part of that is being able to track the cost of goods improvement. And the team does a phenomenal job with that. Another key element of how we bring that to life is actually tracking the performance of the set work. So in any given category, let's say cereal, we will create the strategy, we'll create the planograms, we'll have the in-person or in-store merchandising personnel go in to actually reset those shelves. And then the next element of that is to try to track the increase in sales, both in terms of cases and dollars. And so that's something that Shelly and her team have also been helping us try to more systematically be able to do that and, you know, essentially have it not be such a manual process. As we're able to get retailer point of sale data, that makes it even more specific for how we can showcase lift for any given retailer. Yeah. One of the things that Shelly and I talked about was just how important that data is Mm -hmm. and what retailers can do. Can you talk a little bit more about what specifically AWG brands can do to help retailers using that data? Absolutely. We can get in at a more granular level to be able to look to see how specific items are performing. And that can help from a variety of things. Again, that gives us opportunities to go back to our to our supplier partners and push, whether that might mean for potential funding uh, for promotions or things like that. Likewise, it can help us identify gaps in our assortment, um, right, or understand maybe items that are not moving. We could look at things like that. Um, And then likewise, from a merchandising standpoint, you know, our space planning team can leverage that data to help create the best planogram possible based on actual movement within a given retailer. Yeah, so that data is true. Truly very important to all sorts of different departments here at AWG. And the more that retailers can share that, um, the better for everybody. Absolutely. And just to add to that real quickly, what I'll say, you know, one one potential concern that we have from members is, hey, I just want to make sure that I can only take the benefit from my own data. We absolutely have firewalls to make sure that if you share your data, we're able to create more specific things for you. And then from a, a broader perspective, Without looking at anyone's individual data, we can broaden it to say, what is the greater impact that we can bring, you know, throughout the co-op? So, yes, we can help you very specifically in your stores. But then from a masked data perspective, that still helps us enable us to uh, look at, you know, what we can do from a broader perspective, too. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, So AWG Brands is obviously this big thing. But what excites you the most about AWG Brands? Oh, man. I would say the thing I 
I'm the most excited about. We have a great team. And so, you know, this the team that we have is definitely dedicated to making all of this happen for our members every day. And I think that's one of the things that excites me the most. If people could see the amount of hustle and the amount of heart that goes into AWG Brands, um, you know, it's just phenomenal. It really is. So we've got a dedicated team, not only from our product development and sourcing standpoint, we've got great salespeople that are going out and really trying to make sure that, you know, we're front and center with all of the items that we have. I think we've got a great assortment um, for our members. You know, I love private brands. Having worked in the private brands industry for quite a while, you know, I if you look in my pantry, it's almost all AWG brands, right? Uh, maybe there's a few things here and there because we don't have them. Or my particular uh, member that I shop at may not carry a certain item. That's a big opportunity, I think. And, you know, we're seeing, particularly in these times of inflation, consumers are more willing to try a private brand than perhaps in other times when they weren't. And so, you know, I really do believe that one of the biggest opportunities that our members have today is to simply make sure they are carrying all of the core AWG brands items. Uh, I think, you know, even to the extent of focusing on helping fill some of those voids, even versus having a ton of new items coming out. There's a there's a balance, of course, but I think that that's probably one of the best things that our members can do today is really work with their AWG brands sales representative to look at their item voids and figure out what they're missing in our core assortments today because the, the shopper is there. The money's there in terms of the margins. And so these are really a great opportunity to drive consumers into your stores and to make some money at the same time. Yeah, the some of the stores that I frequent the most, you know, I keep a lookout and they don't always have some things that I would have expected them to have. And then also as part of my job, I make the recipe videos yeah. that go on the Best Choice website every month. And so those are obviously loaded with Best mm-hmm. Choice products. Some of them are harder to find th- than others in certain stores. And I know which stores I can mm-hmm. go to to find them. But I think that that, to your point, it's a big opportunity for retailers of all sizes and demographics to, to really look at what they what they are carrying and what they could be carrying. Absolutely. And, you know, some of the things that we do as an AWG Brands team are really to help drive education, even among our members, so they understand the different positionings of the brands. Likewise, you know, what products we have available in each of the brands. And then we're also working very closely with our category management teams across all of the departments to make sure that we still have good promotional strategies for those AWG brands items throughout key selling seasons and events. So, you know, there's a lot of great information on AWG brands on storefront in the um, value prop toolbox, also in the AWG brands section of the site. So I would highly encourage everyone to look at that, but likewise to reach out to your sales representative in your area because, again, we'd be glad to sit down and walk through the various items that we have, the void reports, so you know what you might be missing, um, because there's just such a great opportunity. And we are also doing quite a few things to help provide turnkey solutions for members, things like in-store signage, in-store audio opportunities, uh, blogger content, some of the videos that you're doing, and thank you for that. They're awesome. Uh, We also create Facebook content and, and social media content content that our retailers can use and put their branding on it from a store banner perspective, but still be able to promote best choice, always save, clearly buy best choice, et cetera. Yeah. The, I think really understanding what the different brands are and where they fit in is, is key because I, what I see is some stores are like, oh no, we're not going to have as many private label options and not realizing that, you know, there's the clearly and the the Mm -hmm. superior selections uh, out there that could fit in quite nicely with the other things that they offer. You know, that's a great point. And I would tell you, even from my years of private brand experience before I came here, retailers offer a portfolio of private brands for a reason. And we do the same thing here at AWG. So we have our Clearly by Best Choice to meet the needs of those consumers who are looking 
looking for free from uh, organic natural items. So that that absolutely serves a purpose. Likewise, our best choice brand is really meant to be a strong compare to against the national brand equivalent. And then with that best choice superior selections being a little bit more of an elevated experience. And that might mean something like seasonal flavors or something that's just a little bit above and beyond what the national brands have. Likewise, Always Save is really meant to be our price fighter in certain categories. And so, you know, when people are comparing against that big behemoth uh, retailer that might start with a W, Always Save is really meant to be that opening price point comparison to fight against them um, and to help our members, you know, in those types of situations. So, yes, every brand has its own role in the portfolio. And within any given store, there's an opportunity to capture consumers that are looking for each of those types of tiers. Absolutely. So looking ahead, what's your vision for AWG brands moving forward? Oh, that's a loaded question. I think, you know, really, I think there's so many great things. Again, we have a very strong portfolio of brands. I'd like to see it grow in terms of, again, member uh, participation in all of the programs. I think that alone will help us be able to, again, aggregate all of the volumes from the members to be able to go out, get better pricing, get better product, or well, no, I don't mean better, but I mean get a broader assortment of product. Um, and so there's a lot of efficiencies that come from a program when you have more buy-in. So that's definitely one of one key element of my vision is to really help drive adoption from the members and our employees as well. I think one of the other things that excites me again is, again, we have such a strong team. So being able to allow each of them to truly drive some of the key areas of the business, I think is so exciting. And, you know, we have a lot of opportunities in some of the other departments. So for example, Fresh, you know, there's so many great opportunities to capture and develop items and make sure we've got the right branding to really bring consumers into those departments. So really trying to drive in some of those areas are certainly part of my vision. What do, when I think of private label, I definitely think center store. So when you say f- fresh, like how does a best choice or always save Apple, you know, differ from the Apple on the next cart over? Well, I will tell you again, our category leaders in fresh do a great job of working with vendor partners to find products that meet the brand guardrails for always save and for best choice um, and really offer a great product selection in that mix. So, you know, I think from a consumer's perspective, they already start to understand the brands because they are seeing them right throughout the rest of the store, including center store. I think the question is, how do we make sure that we have enough items in some of those fresh departments? Likewise, you know, there's such a halo that goes from fresh back into center store. So having some brand recognition in those categories helps draw the shopper down the other aisle. Um, and so I think that's that's a really great opportunity for us to make sure that we've got a nice assortment. And I will say the Fresh team has been doing a great job of really thinking strategically about where it makes sense for them to have private brand items. And then likewise, from our perspective, we use the brand guardrails to make sure they're in the right brand. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Emily, thank you for joining me uh, today. Uh, look forward to see what's going on in the future with AWG Brands. Thank you all for listening. And again, please subscribe to Grocer Pod so you can automatically hear the latest things going on around AWG. Till next time, this has been Shanka Sednar for Grocer Pod. Mm-hmm.